All right, what's up, guys? This is the start of a new series here. This is Ryan from Elevate Security, by the way. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this one is I got a Windows VM here, Windows 7 VM. And uh, we're going to be doing a number of things in this series. So uh, how we're going to start off is I'm going to show you guys how you can use Exploit DB to download vulnerable versions of software and actually conduct your own security testing on it, you know, your own attacks against it. And once we do get, and, and you know, we'll be doing that from our, like remotely from our Kali box over to this thing ultimately. But first we're gonna exploit it locally. And this is gonna help a lot on OSCP. We're gonna particularly exploit a buffer overflow, a Windows buffer overflow in this series and then once we do we're gonna actually be doing some Windows file transfers I'll show you guys a number of different ways that uh, you can leverage uh, the Windows OS to do file transfers so there's a lot of value packed in the series but we're just gonna step through it one piece at a time so if that sounds interesting definitely uh, subscribe to the channel and give this video a like to help out with the algorithms and let me know that uh, there's some interest in this. A lot of times when I look for potential content, I look to see what uh, what you guys are, you know, liking the most, right? So uh, we're just gonna get right into it. This is a really interesting thing that I didn't know you could do uh, when I first started out, right? Exploit DB. We can search for. Here's one that I know is vulnerable to uh, buffer overflow. That is SL. Uh, SL mail. So there's this exploit right here, right? Um, there's also this one down below. Uh, I think they're basically the same thing. It shouldn't really matter. If I click on one of these, uh, it's complaining about a certificate or something. Uh, let me see if I can just. I did not foresee this. This is a, this VM that I just set up, so. There might be some issues. So to circumvent this issue, we'll do some uh, Windows file transfer uh, straight off. So uh, we can we can get into this in this video. Really, I wanted to show you guys the downloading it from Exploit DB, and we can cover that plus file transfer in this video. So uh, we're just kind of winging it here a little bit, but uh, no, I think this will be good. So we can download the vulnerable app here rather than the exploit, and. Uh, That'll save it as this kind of long executable here. So when we save that, it's going to go right to our downloads, it looks like. We'll simplify the name, certainly, to uh, simplify things here. So just for the sake of making sure everything works, I'll go into my root account. We're going to go to Home Cali Downloads is where I think it is. And we're going to move this long thing to slmail.exe to make things simple, right? We'll just run file on that. It's a 32-bit executable uh, file. So right here is where we are going to host our files. We're going to use the Python FTP server. That's one way that... Uh, is pretty good for their, like Windows file transfers, especially when you have to deal with binaries, as this is a binary executable file. So the way I like to do this is with the Python dash m pi ftpd lib. Oops, ftpd lib, and hopefully I didn't fat finger anything there. And we're gonna say port twenty one, standard FTP, right? So that's gonna start up a FTP server for us. And it looks like it's on all interfaces, so hopefully that's not going to be an issue here. Let's see uh, our IP address on our local network, not the hack the box one. Uh, so to do that, you can run with this one here. This is currently our IP address, which we will change after the video. And then let's see here. Um, now that we have this information, we can go over to the Windows box and we can just check the IP address here just for good measure. Make sure we're on the same network. Yes, we are with the IPv4 address. So what we're going to do is we're going to run FTP 
And uh, this is the FTP way to do things. And we're going to give it the IP address of our Kali box, 192.168.1.103, as we saw. And it's going to, the Python FTP server defaults to anonymous, anonymous, you know, that uh, anonymous FTP login that we use uh, all the time on these hack the box uh, boxes, right? So first thing we're going to type, and I know this is probably very small text, and I apologize. Windows command line kind of sucks, so I hope you guys can can see this okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type binary to put it into binary mode. And uh, now that I've done that, we can see what's here, right? And uh, I'm going to need to give it access here, right? It looks like <laughs> it's a little scared of what FTP is doing. But uh, we told it, calm down, everything's fine. So we're going to get slmail.exe. And so now the transfer is complete. So we type buy, and that's how we exit. Now, it should have saved it right there, and I do see it. So we will try to start this up, and hopefully everything runs smoothly, right? We'll keep our fingers crossed on this one. <laughs> so this is just one way to do the file transfer. Now, there's a number of other ways. We could have done it with PowerShell, or we could even use the cert util command. I will say the cert util, the reason I didn't use that one is that oftentimes it uh, screws up binaries. And we got a binary executable here. So FTP, I thought, was uh, one of the you know, best ways to go. All right, so let's go to our C drive users. This is my user account here. And not there. Where was it? Ah, right here, SL mail. As we see here, so uh, we got immunity. I went ahead and downloaded that on this box. This is my debugger. Now there's a number of options as far as debuggers go when it goes to Windows. I prefer immunity just personally, and that's what you use on OSCP uh, unless they change that. I'm pretty sure they didn't. Uh, you'll get a box on OSCP when you do it. Excuse me. When you do OSCP, they'll give you a Windows box. Everyone gets a Windows box that already has immunity installed on it and all the vulnerable programs that you would need to exploit uh, in your buffer overflow stuff. So I think the first thing we need to do is just run this application here. And hopefully there's no like special configuration stuff I need to do beforehand on this. I don't believe there is. Hopefully I don't need to register it or anything like that, right? So yeah, let's see if this is gonna be... There might be some special configuration stuff that I'm going to need, and maybe I'll have to figure that out outside the video, and we'll do it later. I'll, just, I'll let you guys know how I configured it if you're interested. Uh, let's do a local mail. I think that might be the way to go. Right, and so we might need to figure out how we can make this available to our Kali box so we can do the remote, uh, you know, that remote attack and get a shell as I wanted to mention earlier. Because I want to show you a really like OSCP like example, you know. So this is just using the standard port 25 for SMTP. This is a mail uh, server we're running, mail service. So that looks good. We're just sort of clicking through here, getting the initial installation stuff set up for this. Once we got it running, then we can go ahead and attach this uh, to our immunity debugger. And then that's when the real fun will begin, right? It looks like we'll need to go ahead and restart, so we'll just let that do its thing, right? This is going to take a minute, but this is the general idea, right? 
Uh, we'll come back in another video and continue on with this, but I wanted to give you guys the general flow of how you can actually just get started by, you know, something vulnerable uh, that you know about. You just go on ExploitDB, you can download the vulnerable version of the software, and you can uh, bring it into your own home lab environment uh, for testing and to further strengthen your skills. This is really good for attackers because there's always new exploits being discovered. In this case, it's a really old one, really easy one for demonstration purposes, but there's always new stuff being found, and you can stay on top of your game by downloading the newest versions of things that have known vulnerabilities and actually trying to go off some of these POCs and uh, reproduce the exploits. If you're really into exploitation, definitely not only something that would be fun to do, but would actually be pretty worthwhile as well. So yeah, I hope this video was of value to you guys. I'll be coming back. Remember, I said this is the start of a series, so we're really going to be diving deep with the buffer overflow stuff. We're going to start with the Windows buffer overflow with this SL Mail program, and we're going to go from there, show you some more file transfer, cool file transfer stuff you can do on Windows, and really just giving you the information that you need to know for OSCP when it comes to Windows. So yeah, uh, that's all I got for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video.